and today's the hello and welcome to the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in knoxville tennessee we're recording this on sunday morning november 13th 2022 i'm larry rhodes or dj doubter five oh and as usual we have our co-host wombat on the line with us hello wombat Hey, I'm unverified on Twitter, but I'm still here. Yeah, me too. Our guests today are the John is the John Richards from over England. Welcome. How the devil are you? Uh, doing well, with, with or without the devil. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I'll just bet you're not. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, the Atheist Society of Knoxville. And we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about God and Twitter accounts because, you know, I think they're becoming one and the same thing. And uh, it will be an interesting concept. But before we jump into it, how about we just do a quick little touch on how everyone's been since the last time we've spoken to each other. John Richard's going to throw it out to you. I hope you've been well. What's going on with you? I have been well, thank you very much. And I've been doing my usual YouTubing and, and stuff. We had a meeting this morning for the Atheism UK because we've got a, an event coming off with okay. Professor A.C. Grayling, her, who you may have heard of. He's, he's printed about 24 books, published about 24 books, on theism and philosophy and uh, the god um the god proposition is one of them that sold a lot of copies but he's coming to speak to us in london on the 29th so i pr did a promotion for that this morning and of course during that recording the band went past because we have remembrance sunday oh. and the parade goes right past this house boom 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 <laughs> so that was in the background of my recording oh lovely okay <laughs> lovely lovely you lovely. can't pay for that kind of uh yeah you sound effects <laughs> yeah if i was a tourist in that place that'd be like an awesome time to go outside and like watch them yeah do their thing. yeah yeah well we did we uh they on the way back they spend about half an hour at the church and then they come marching back and that's when we open the front door and gawped at them Yes. Okay, and, and I'm just going to ask for some context here. Remembrance, what is that a holiday? Is that a particular thing? What's going on with that? It's to commemorate the first and second world wars and subsequent wars that have happened since th they finished. Okay, so and like our veterans. So it, it's like Armistice Day, okay, which is which is actually on the 11th because, of course, the the war wrapped up, the first war wrapped up on the 11th, at the 11th hour, on the 11th day of mm -hmm. the 11th month. Mm -hmm. And that's why that time is celebrated with a two minutes period of silence mm -hmm. in the country. But uh, we've al always had, well, not always, but for some time, we've also had a, an event on the nearest Sunday, which is called Remembrance Sunday, because we recognize that that's when people can actually get out and put wreaths against cenotaphs and, you know, go and do a bit of praying to, to, for no more war. Yeah, that works. Mm. That's a good day. I mean, that's yeah. a good way to get everybody on the same page with regard to peace. I like it. I like it. Larry, yeah. how you been? I'm doing well, except that uh, we, we had uh, COVID in the house well, for the last couple of weeks. Isn't that the second time? Yeah, well, Mickey got it after Sheila did. So, um, luckily, I didn't get it, or, or and uh, you know, it worked out pretty well for me. But we we self isolated, and the symptoms they got weren't really bad, except some coughs and some congestion. But that's no fun. But uh, we were all well vaccinated, vaccinated, and well um, boosted, so it wasn't very bad. Yeah, I would say now, now, and it'll always be now, it'll always be the, the most up-to-date moment, is the best time to get COVID. Because mm -hmm. before, when anyone, no one was getting vaccinated, we didn't have any vaccines, we didn't have mm -hmm. the PPE supplies, people were hoarding left and right, no one was being very considerate. 
right politicized washing your hands to get rid of germs like it was the and we didn't have a president that had necessarily a plan for us to move forward with that we had a bad situation and getting sick in that time period was a really big deal because we're just putting additional stress on the hospital sector and so on but now like we've we've come up with a plan we have vaccinated i'm on my sixth one already um we have ppe in supply we have healthcare that are being supported, healthcare workers that are being supported. And now like, oh, you got COVID? Well, you know, you can you can go to a clinic. There's plenty of space there. It's sanitized. Like you can get your conditions, you can get your treatment, you can go home, you can rest it out. You, We all have this great thing. And I think one of the best things that came out of COVID was the remote work from home schedules that we have. Right. Um, a lot more people I've noted are having the option to work from home instead of having to commute to work every day. And I can't tell you how cool it is to just like have one scheduled day where I don't have to think about getting dressed, going out and sitting in front of a desk, doing what I could be doing in front of my computer at home. And like, mm-hmm. and, and sort of like managing my own time on a more familiar basis, just being in my own digs is a lot better. So yeah, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you, I know you'll come through it and I hope wish the best for your family for sure. No, thank you. Guys, I have one last update. I have, of course, played in a disc golf tournament on Veterans Day. Um, we drove out with seven other guys, all skilled players, some of them including the people who taught me how to play for the first time. First time ever throwing a disc, it was those guys. It was So it's basically a bunch of firemen. They have Veterans Day off, and they're like, hey, Ty, do you want to come with us? There's going to be a tournament up in this town called Dixon. I went out there with them, and it was just a bunch of really cool dudes. Um, we all threw discs. As you guys know, I only throw putters. I only throw like more or less two discs. And my strategy is just placement and and landing in no trouble zones and then making par. And if I get the opportunity to make a birdie, I'll take it. But otherwise, I'm playing safe. I'm not trying to show up anybody or or get myself into trouble. Well, what and, usually wins those tournaments, under or, or par? Being under. Being under typically wins. But this time mm-hmm. I won. And I was very happy about that. I tied with first place. And the way how I, I, I would my credit to is just being very very careful with my placements on a brand new course brand new territory mm-hmm. just saying hey i want to land within 10 feet of here 10 feet of there and that i can putt for par if i if i make it a little bit better i'll go for a birdie but i'll just play safe and stay conservative throughout the entire time and that strategy won out for me sometimes if you can play mm, for cool. par, that's good enough for you and i was i was yeah. lucky to get through that all right oh, it hasn't reached this country and I, I don't know of anywhere that you can play disco here but yeah. we're, we're going to get it because everything you have, we get later, whether it's good or bad. I mean, <laughs> we, we, we even had we even had our version of Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's really popular in Sweden, so I can imagine it'll trickle down faster from there than it would mm. be across the pond. But we'll see. We'll see. Mm. Definitely. We just need some great British players. That's it. All right, guys. I want to get into the meat and potatoes of today's show. This is talking about Twitter um it's been in the news if you have any sort of feeds that feed into social media and i'm trying not to get into this because i'm I'm not too well versed in the world of social media anyway that's what all these grabby hairs are for we need younger audience in here but basically a guy named elon musk bought twitter changed some of the standards that they have there and now a bunch of parody accounts that didn't have that little blue coveted check mark next to them now do have it but the only problem is is a lot of the parody accounts are representing religious figures, military officials, politicians, brands, and all of which verified, (laughs) all of which are verified. So like, there's a fake Nike account. There's a fake Nintendo account. There's a fake Super Mario account. There's a fake Rudolph Giuliani account. Who's like a a guy who's like a politician in the U S but there's also fake gods. Well, of course there's fake gods, right? (laughs) So there's not any real ones. So so that'll be, that'll be a fake God of the fake god <laughs> <laughs> well you know two negatives cancel out to a positive so now we have a true reliable testable feedback from uh, a purported f- prophet so we have a muhammad mm-hmm. twitter account there's a jesus twitter account there's a god twitter account i'll get that blue check mark next to him and i i can't imagine how awesome that is because it starts a really great conversation where christians are very upset and it's like how dare you especially Muslims, Islam, all that stuff. How dare you misrepresent my faith through this parody account with that little blue check mark? Take that check mark off. Let it go back to how it was before. And in my head, it's like, I see it in, yes, I get it that it's offensive, right? Because you're being misrepresented. But also, 
you live in a universe where that was possible, you would think your God would not want that to happen if that God existed. And two, why doesn't your God just make his own account or their own account? Because that would be a very, very good way to bolster definitively that that God exists. And so I was thinking Yeah, he could constantly tell us stuff that we don't know. Oh, that the, that be great? the greatest minds on earth don't know and yeah, you can fill yeah. in the gaps how wow. much time do we spend praying when we could just be tweeting and think about yes. this i'm doing this please bless my food it's like god could you bless my food for the rest of the week got it replied <laughs> you know hey what's up a little heart symbol next to it Go yeah. you want to uh, i made the point for the show that uh now that Jesus and God have little verified check marks, there's some evidence. You know, we're always asking for evidence. Right. But this is also a good way to, to demonstrate that there are good evidence and there's bad evidence. Correct. This is not good evidence, yes. obviously. John, yes. get it. Well, I'm wondering who's sponsoring God? Because, of course, he never has any money of himself, of his own, does he? Hmm. So, it, and, and it's eight dollars a month for verification you can buy verification. oh i didn't know that i didn't know that i, I didn't did know, know that was, i didn't know it was eight bucks a month oh wow oh, well, that i'm that. i'm a social media freak so i, I keep up with these things <laughs> john so, we're going to be relying on you through this whole show <laughs> <laughs> so so the thing is that uh, for a lot of people in particularly in your country eight dollars a month isn't a lot right. so they can they can afford to, to buy any innumerable accounts which is exactly what Elon Musk doesn't want. <laughs> he wanted to make sure that everybody had only had one identified account, verified account. But in fact, what he's made is it cheaply available to have multiple accounts. Wow. Yeah, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So I do, I, I still don't see the bad side on just having God be on Twitter. Here's my, here's my number one point. We solve that nasty atheist problem. You know, uh, Christians don't like atheists. Gods don't like atheists. Atheists are ambivalent on the concept. It's just a position on a singular question. We'd be happy to ditch it as well. But if you came out with a God that had a, you know, we, we shut down all the servers and this account is still tweeting. We turned off all the electricity. It's still updating. Like this is clearly supernatural. I don't know what this thing is. And it's speaking to us. It's predicting things from the future. Maybe it's a technology. Maybe it's an algorithm. No, it's explaining it to us. It's like, oh, it's just God. Sorry. Sorry. We'll plug you back in. My mm -hmm. idea would be like. No, he'll, hey, say, he'll say, don't bother. He was like, <laughs> guys, it's not a problem. If you want me to, I'll tweet this in the clouds too. It's like, this yeah, is not, yeah. this is not a hard thing for me to do. I'm just doing, I'm tweeting on computers for your benefit. I'm like, okay, well, yeah. you know what? I'm willing to believe that this thing is beyond uh, what we would naturally consider what the rule set was so that would be the first supernatural thing i'd believe in and if that thing wants to identify as a god i'd be like okay it's the closest thing we got maybe i'm not an atheist anymore i'm not worshiping that yet but i can believe that's a god i have better evidence to believe that what do you think larry well i think that even if he does it it does it and says he's a god you know mm. that he knows all this stuff it doesn't mean it's any particular god right uh, and of course everybody would jump to the conclusion it's my god it's our god right. it's this right, religion's right. god see we told you when when there's no proof for it right no evidence for it no no reason to make that leap i'll put it that way go on john richards well if if there is a real god with a twitter account right why doesn't why doesn't he delete all the fake god twitter accounts maybe mm -hmm. that could be the next step it's just like hey listen i'm the number one god and let's just say it's the Christian God, just for the sake of the show. And it's like, I'm this version of the Christian God. This is the one I am. If, would you guys like me to delete all the other parody accounts? I mean, I'm fine with the free speech thing. I'm totally cool with it, but I'm not here to make too many waves. I'm just letting you know, here's your point of contact with me moving forward. You can put down the book. I like technology of certain generations. I think books are a little outdated. We're just going to stick to the Twitter thing for mo moving on. I'm like, that works. Think about it like this. Here's my point. When the whole the Bible was written, people hold that up as like a book from God. But that a, a book in the Mesopotamian area was like a big deal. This guy has a thing with words on it that he can read and explain what the writer said. That's technology that a lot of people didn't understand. They didn't understand what yeah. reading was. That's huge. Why are we still using that outdated technology now? You can't verify who wrote a book. You can lie in a book. You can be any sort of charlatan and just pretend you know the text in the book or misquote things or turn to certain pages for your benefit. What if you had a verified account that was like following a terms of service? <laughs> Time stamped. Like, that's amazing. What do you yeah. think, Larry? 
Oh, I was talking about having a book and, and being able to read it and people going, wow. Uh, Joseph Smith, the guy who started uh, the Mormon uh, religion, used to carry around a, a tablet of hier hier hieroglyphics, right. Egyptian writing, and uh, say that he knew what it was and uh, that only he could read it and all that. Right. And when he, he would tell his audience whatever he wanted them to hear based on that tablet. Yeah, you, you put it in a hat and you put his face in the hat. Well, no, it was this this was different than the golden plates. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Just straight up hieroglyphics because yeah, nobody ever saw the golden plates. Oh my gosh. No, but he would carry this tablet around with him and show it to people and, and read it for them. Yeah, the weird thing is people can actually read hieroglyphics. So like I wouldn't he I would be remiss to see if he could do that trick in front of actual experts. I know he's dead. But like mm -hmm. in front of actual people, like this eyeball means cat. It's like no, there's already a symbol for cat. It's cat. It's what are you yes. doing, um, <laughs> John Richards? You got any thoughts on this? The idea that if you had a Twitter account from a god, like not only would you, I hopefully not be an atheist anymore, or would you still be an atheist? Would you still be doing your uh, presidential or your your former presidential duties, your shows? If there was a confirmed god and he had a Twitter account, would you or would you retire? What what would what would happen with you? I'm a skeptic. Okay. And I would want some, believe it or not, verification. <laughs> <laughs> not beyond that blue check mark? Yes. And, yes. and would like to know how they verify. He says yes, he yes. wants a different color check mark. He wants the, the green and the golden one. What? <laughs> well, well, I'm pleased that he's come up to date because you're right. Mm. Writing was an enormous breakthrough. It enabled us to capture thoughts in other people's heads which right. you know uh, weren't weren't fleeting like speech right so we mm -hmm. and that meant we could transcend time we could find right, out right. what did people thought in their heads mm. and and then of course there was discs you know the original 78s and, and then there was smaller discs and then there was tape recorders and and right. then there was cds and, and then there was the the plug-in um thingy you know the little uh, you know, thumb, the thumb drive. Thumb, okay, okay, thumb yeah, drive. yeah, yeah. Thumb drive, that's the word. Boxes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and so now he's really come up to date and he's on the cloud. I love it. Right. But but I want him to prove to me that he really is him. Okay, okay. I understand it's going to be as a skeptical minded person. It's It's mm. always healthy to ask these questions. And I mm. imagine God would still have a lot of work ahead of himself themselves based on... Mm one means of communication how about this larry i'd love to get your point of view on this what if he just started answering some prophecies or just making prophecies that are immediate or accurate and repeatable and testable oh, yeah if he could make prophecies yeah. about tomorrow i mean we yeah. could verify that tomorrow it's like, yeah watch out for this but, plane crashing yeah. watch out for this person who's die at this second Ooh. watch out well for not choking on this this is the Ooh, temperature yeah. this monsoon's mm -hmm. about to happen make sure you have this much Sandbags. Yeah, uh, I would think that natural natural disasters would be better than anything else. Because if he told us about a plane crash, we would have to then go after the account to see how he knew that plane was going to crash and right. how culpable he was in the in the. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. If but it was natural just a, disasters would be great. Yeah. Good with it, if he was just a natural disaster avoidance call line first. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or even an anthropogenic disaster. It will be very good to hear when we're, we're going to solve the problem of climate change, for there example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or here's how to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Here's, here's some lectures you'll look, listen to. Mm -hmm. Connect the dots. I, I won't do it for you, but if you listen to these three guys and you put mm. them together, you're going to figure it out. I, I, these are three hints. They're the three best hints. How mm. about this? It's not immediately that you would think, oh, it's a God and it is that God. But if that God or that Twitter user was benevolent, they could find a way to be very useful very helpful. And, and very helpful to the point where whether or not we want to use the label God, they're still in our best interest, interest to listen to or read mm -hmm. their tweets and follow yeah. and be like, hey, you know what? I don't understand the whole God thing. I don't have a, a I have to, I have a skeptical mindset and I don't think a Twitter account is enough for me to believe in the supernatural. Oh, However, sure. you are doing a very good useful job and no one can find you so like that's fine but what you're saying is very very helpful and people are listening to it so 
keep doing what you're doing. I think that could be a good use. We don't need the ego. You don't have to worship me. Mm -hmm. You could just be saying nice things that could help us be better yeah. and kinder to each other and the world. What do you think, Larry? Well, even even then, though, I mean, we we'd have to face the the possibility that it's not a god; it's a uh, very advanced alien civilization that is using its advanced technology mm. and uh, you know abilities to be able to convince us that we're God. I, I've always thought that if a if an alien civilization uh, read us well and been watching us for a hundred years or whatever, the best way that they could sh they could invade us and take over is to show up on a cloud uh, dressed as jesus you know and half the world would capitulate immediately you know it just it depends on uh you know the you know what you uh the interpretation of what's happening i mean you right. can go directly to god and say oh it's god or you can search a little farther and find out what's actually causing uh this site to say the things that it's doing or or you know the main thing the main point i'm trying to say is if you see something that's unexplained mm. and can't explain it sure that's all it is it's something that's unexplainable i love that's it. it period i love it you know uh there is the verified god account now it's called the tweet of god who says there is life in outer space and it's intelligent and that's why it's staying far away from you so like what you were saying about mm -hmm. the, uh, <laughs> the intelligent life just communicating with us, that could still be a possibility. My only, my only, my major big hangup would be the ego associated with being a God who wants to be worshiped, right? Because if this God doesn't care about worship and was truly just in our best interest, there could be a way to format the tweets so that we're interested in what that's being said. We see the value in paying attention to it. There's a great utility in following the directions that are provided. And there's no turnaround of now 10% of your paycheck, please. Or, and bring your kids to Bible study, please. Or now worship me with your soul. Give that to me now. And if you do anything else, we're going to punish you. Um, there's such a, a lack of that in the Bible. Yet, even in this hypothetical situation, we can come up with, this would be a really great format for a God to do this yeah. communication oh. with the followers, make it direct, get rid of atheists, immediately see how we should be behaving with each other, following the most relevant technology that's accessible to a lot of people. How? Because not everybody can read, and not everybody who has the Bible has read the Bible, and, and the majority of them are Christians. <laughs> so why not just make it a Twitter account? Just quick little tweets. Everyone can see that. Larry, what do you think? Oh, you're on mute, my friend. Sorry, um, was especially God. Catholics. Ah. What I'm saying about Catholics is the, the church doesn't want you to read the Bible. They all read the Bible and tell you what it says, tell right. you what it means. Correct. So there's a whole, the largest Christian denomination on the planet doesn't want you to read the Bible. Right. Which is weird. I mean, when the Bible first came out is in, in publicly accessible print and books mm. because of Gutenberg, right. was, uh, they did not want you to have that book. They right. made it illegal right yeah. And, yeah and you know it'd be it'd be a really for skeptics it'd be a really hard, tough pill to swallow still because how who could say it wasn't just a very clever hacker group or a, a trillionaire illuminati or a time traveler who's figured out how to send tweets into the past you know just like figure out a way to figure that out all those steps all of those bizarre circumstances are far more possible just being the fact that we're using, you know, elements and ingredients that already exist in reality, then jumping to a supernatural being who's outside that and opens up a realm of magical questions or potential answers. So being skeptical, totally worthwhile, totally valuable, totally respectable. And I would imagine that a God who just really did care about our best interests would still find a way to, to have a positive impact with that account to begin with without worship behind it. What's up, John? Well, I've just thought there's obviously going to be a lot of commercial implications to this, because if there is genuinely a mm. God who we can communicate with, maybe via Twitter, yeah. then obviously that's a better source of information than Google. Oh. Or any church or any he, preacher. He's omniscient. Yeah. Isn't yeah he? What if you just had an answer day, like a God just had for 24 hours, I'll answer any question you want. You can just yeah, use yeah, me yeah. like Google, and they'll be like, well, tell me blah, blah, blah. So, 
just immediately yeah, yeah. retweets it back. Well, which so, religion is the right religion? You know, which preacher boom, boom, boom. should I listen to? And you boom. could eliminate all of the other ones. It's the yeah. immediate. So, so this is going to put Google out of business. Then, of course, we can ask him how to cure all diseases. So that will put the medical profession out of business. No I need think, for any hospitals. Now, here's the thing. The medical profession, there might be some politics involved in this, sure. But you would still need people to administer the steps that God's providing you. Like if he says, hey, get vaccinated once a year, you still need people to do vaccines. You still need people to make vaccines. You still need places to store them, technology to you know, distribute them accurately and in a safe way and like i don't think you'd get rid of doctors by knowing that cough medicine sometimes works right so you would still need checkups and all that stuff and maybe that's the instructions that he gives out but yeah i hear what you're saying like we could ask these hard-hitting questions we can ask for a bunch of stuff oh we are getting close to the bottom half hour what a great topic guys how about we take a quick break and we'll come right back after this break larry why don't you take us out oh he's on he's on pause yeah. Oh, there we go. Well, I hit the button. Okay. It didn't, didn't go away. Uh, stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour here on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, and we have over 1,000 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high-top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom Ask meeting, that's ASK Meetup, um, on Zooms. So, and you can join us there if you uh, email us for details on how to connect with us. Uh, send the emails to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can go to meetup, do a search for an atheist group in your town. If you don't find one, Start one. Start one. Well, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? We're oh, we have Sky to... with us now. Welcome, Sky. Hey, Sky. Good morning. Let me get my phone stand set up. Nice. Okay. Good. Well, Sky, good that you can join the show today. Today, we're talking about how much more simple or complicated would life be if God just had a Twitter account? Uh, for the sake of argument, let's just assume that when we discussed it in the beginning of the show, while it's good to have a skeptical mindset, let's just believe that we were able to confirm for a fact that this is God, Christian God. I know there's 30,000 different denominations, but we'll just, you know, pick a, a standard non-denominational one. So, yeah, that's God. Yes, it is the Christian God. I am real. I've already uh, put a little uh, disclaimer on all the fake gods. I'm the real one. Feel free to ask me anything. I'll immediately reply instantaneously because I already know what you're going to ask me. And hopefully the questions are satisfying to you. <laughs> After right, that, yeah. mm -hmm. feel free to continue the conversation. It's not a one and done thing. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to answer this. I want to help you guys get back on path. But this is the new Bible. We're not doing the books anymore. We're doing this now. So everyone get on board mm -hmm. with this. All right. Thank you very much. Anyone have can any questions? Can... Yeah, we, I can see you, Scott. John Richards, okay, do you have any exactly. questions? What's up? Well, it, it's not. It's, I'm going to disagree with you, Ty, because uh, uh, <laughs> the the idea that we would still need to have medical people to follow God's instructions about having vaccinations in time and so on and so forth, hmm. I, I can't I can't fathom that because, of course, God is not only um, omniscient; He not only knows everything, but He's also omnipotent, so right. He can. He can do anything, and and he's omnibenevolent. So what he wants to do is to help us. So all we've got to do is say to him, don't bother infecting us with this COVID bug. You know, stop it. You know, I, I'd be totally open to a guy who would re respond to that question and even maybe make a poll and just be like, what do you guys want? Do you want me to just get rid of all bacteria or whatever that can be harmful to human beings, but potentially useful for other things or anything like that? And it's not like there's already seven billion of you on the planet 
No, <laughs> no, no, my problem. I did tell you guys to propagate, but you want to take this out? We totally can. Here's a poll. And now you guys can choose whether I immediately get rid of all of them and you never have to vaccinate again, or we keep the same system and you guys just try to, you know, uh, handle it yourselves and maintain yeah, the branch yeah. of the science that you discovered. Right. I like I like what Stephen Fry said in that interview with an Irish journalist yeah. some years ago when he said if I could he was invited to meet God and mm. ask what he would say. And yeah. he would say he would say children's cancer. Yeah. Why? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And that that's another problem. You're talking about getting rid of any bacteria that is potentially harmless, harmful. Uh, well human cells. I mean, cancer are human cells yeah. that uh, that run rampant and can destroy us or, or kill us. And what you know, can he would he get rid of all human cells? That wouldn't work. <laughs> now there is a weird thing too, because if we are talking to God, right? We're talking to a person who knows what happens to us after we die. And if his immediate, I'm sure someone's going to tweet this and ask him, it's like, hey, what happens to us after we die? It's like, you just hang out here. You want you want some pictures? And it's like pictures of people hanging out in heaven used to die, including the kids with cancer. It's just like, it's way cooler up here, but you got to wait until you're dead. <laughs> We're, well, we haven't made enough seats yet. Yeah. <laughs> the rate at which we make seats is not I, ready I for 7 billion seen. people to jump on here. So like, yeah, it sucks getting child cancer, but look, they're they're here and they're all okay. Sorry about the sorry about it. That's my bad for the cancer thing. But I have a question. Yeah, go for it, Scott. If God is omniscient, doesn't that make free will totally superfluous? Yeah, I think God would just be it depends on how you define free will. That's a pretty loaded question. Yeah, if he if he knew everything that was going to happen to anybody, any decision that they were going to make, then at that point you couldn't make any other decision. So yeah. I, I agree with you that would put an yeah. end to the free will debate. Yeah, I and think a lot of no, I think a lot no of people are praying. Sure, you should be tweeting instead of praying. That's what God would be. Right, saying. exactly. Be tweeting instead of praying. Stop praying. Start tweeting. I can catch them way faster yeah. that way. Would be um, more yeah. probably. Well, it's even worse than that. If God knew everything and then he'd know what his decisions were going to be going forward and he couldn't change them. So he wouldn't have any free will himself. So, so I know Bujo is not on the call, but we typically have this conversation a lot of times about what do we mean when we say free will? Are we really talking about going from random elements to an actual meaningful choice or a choice uninspired by any other condition that you are in your environment? Or is it a willful intent? Are we talking about intent of the action? Is it like if I'm being dragged out of a restaurant and I'm being escorted out of a restaurant or I'm asked to leave a restaurant or I just get up and walk away from the table? Like, are all those indications of free will? Or am I, when I'm dragged out, is that a violation of my free will? Like, is there a difference there? And some people have that meaning as their uh, determination. So I think as long as you are clear with your tweet and explain what you mean in context and a God is willing to genuinely answer back, I prefer that system better than the one that we got right now, where it's just these questions that we bounce back and forth between meat bags on Zoom. Like, I want, I want to get God to actually give me some meaningful feedback on this. And if anything, yeah, I'm open to the conversation on Twitter. <laughs> but just make sure it's like a well-defined term. That's all. It's like, God, when I'm safe, free will, I mean this. And God's like, oh, that? Yeah, that doesn't exist. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I can totally control that. It's kind of a loaded, a loaded phrase, I admit. Yeah. Mm. John, you look <clears throat> uncomfortable. What? Isn't this amazing? Couldn't we have this? Do we, you sound like you would be more unhappy if we had God, the Twitter account, than otherwise. And I think it's just because <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do as many YouTube shows. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very happy. I will, I will argue with them now they're on Twitter. <laughs> uh -huh. well, no, I'm, cool. I'm all for truth. I mean, if God exists, I would rather that he revealed himself. Mm. Yes. I mean, other than just be the champion of hide and go seek forever and leave us guessing I, exactly. and i think that's the root of it because we have mm -hmm. in the bible examples where god does reveal himself to people like it forms a dove or the in the, the stories son. yeah in, the, in the, his holy book in his book yeah. like he mm -hmm. does it on multiple occasions angels yeah. his own son resurrections miracles he has no qualms of meeting people and being like hey by the way i'm god see you later burning bushes mm -hmm. etc but now that we live in the age where cameras exist, we suddenly don't see God anymore. 
And I feel like uh, that's very, very telling for people who have a skeptical mindset of like, mm-hmm. why does God disappear when we're able to better record things and capture or even things? miracles? Right. Like, why does yeah. he go down the same rate as Bigfoot? <laughs> or, or, right. would you, or would you True. actually believe that God used to be in the business of doing things that he doesn't do anymore? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. He's retired. <laughs> yeah, or uh, someone who's perfect has changed their modus operandi in terms of how they interact with the world, which means you can only become less perfect at that point. It's a confusing sentiment. So that's why I'm so happy that we should have a verified God Twitter account. Immediately get rid of all the other religions. Just be like, it's just this one. Feel free to talk to me. Anyone can talk to me immediately. I'll respond back immediately. Feel free to stop praying. Just do this immediately. And now we have a direct line of communication to at least one being. Now everyone hopefully can at least have the option to be on one consistent page. You have the option. You don't have to get rid of the religion that you have right now, but hopefully people will prefer the one that's giving the prophecies that are accurate, the 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 beneficial science explanations, uh, the the long outstanding conversations and pe- about free will and the nature of human being and, and complexity of the universe, the, uh, the apparent complexity of the universe, and be like, you know what? If it's a time traveler, if it's a guy in the future, if it's a wizard, I, I'm i still more inclined to at least be in this guy's side because at least this guy's not asking me to give up my money. He's only asking for eight bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he, uh, he and apologize for being human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Richards, what do you yeah. think? There's a can of worms, you see, because God is always on both sides, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> on which one? And- on which case? On which case? Well, in World War II, mm. we, the Allies thought that God was on their side, and the Axis powers thought that God was on their side. Right, and not only was it just a God, it was the Christian God. Yes, yeah, indeed. You know, on both true, sides. True. It's a yeah. messy situation. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people, I guarantee, yeah. I guarantee. So, so a question to ask, a question to ask this real God, who verified tick God, is... Yes. Why has he created lots of different gods that are geographically based and instilled them in the populations who live there? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. like it's gonna suck. I think I think it would probably be good to just have candid answers from God, wouldn't you agree? And just be like, those aren't real yes. ones; they were made by people. I I had an opinion where it was best for me not to intervene. Clearly, it had yeah. a bad side. I'm trying to clarify right. that now. That would be my guys. next question. By the way, why? everyone that's dead is here with me now. They're all cool. So, like, yeah, can yeah, we just agree yeah. that that's not a problem? All right. Sorry okay, about that. Well, okay, can, so. can you bring Abraham Lincoln to the <laughs> mic, please? <laughs> 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 or Darwin? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Darwin says, so, what's up? Okay, well, go ahead, John. Go on, John. So, so God, how do we tell a fake God from a real God? Oh, such Give a us the criteria. Yes, I want yes, to know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And my, stuff like my, that. Stuff here's like an that. Go for it. Go for it. My, my former. Wombat, actually, according to the epistles, no one is in heaven yet. We are all waiting for the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And Paul says that it will not be a bodily resurrection, but a resurrection of the spirit. And God already has new perfect bodies for us waiting in heaven. Right, right, right. Uh, God would repeat and just be like, they were wrong. Here's videos of them. We're hanging out. Boom. Next, next, next question. Yeah. Sorry, well, about, for, sorry for if, being so frank. John Richards had a point, though. I, I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, I, 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 I want to tell about my former father-in-law, who was a, a Christian, a very devout man. And he was angry one time because there were lots of fake pastors who were fleecing people in various countries, all their money, and and obviously obviously weren't Christian because, of course, uh, Jesus wasn't keen on collecting money for himself. But I asked him, how do you tell a fake pastor from a real pastor? I didn't get an answer. He had no idea how to do that. How about this? God says, you know what? That's a great point. I'm going to just do this. I'm going to change humanity so that whenever you hear someone lie, you're just going to hear, because I'm a gypsy girl, like that one hit wonder instead just playing in the background ever so slightly. Whenever someone lies, you'll just hear that little jingle and you'll be like, ah, okay, okay. Thanks, God. That makes it a lot easier for me. It's like, you're welcome. 
that's something that supernatural <laughs> being could do. Could do. And you'd be like, well, thank you. And two, we can test it repeatedly over and over and over again. It's like, my name's Richard. My name's Michael. My name's Tyrone. It's like, oh, the jingle didn't go off that time. And now people yeah, yeah. have a criteria of knowing when they're being lied to and when they're not being lied to. And you can use that criteria to figure out the false gods from the true gods. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Elon Musk, incorporate that into Twitter. <laughs> or books or you know any anything written yeah if parody, if we, if parody we are, accounts can have that little j jingle right mm -hmm. if we are talking about a supernatural being there could be potentially supernatural answers for a lot of the stuff they're asking for and i mm -hmm. think that only goes towards not only demonstrating the capability of that god if it's in our best interest that he does it or she does it or they do it but also the capability of a being that should be beyond the rules of physics as we understand them i think why not parlay into that? You like you, if you're a supernatural being and you're in our interest and you're omni benevolent, do those things and don't cause harm through your actions, but at least make the life a little bit better. And if we can come up with a better criteria from determining true things from false things, almost intuitively with just like a cool little jingle, maybe with something we can program ourselves, man, that'd be really great. What's up, John Richards? He maybe, says, what about the copyright payments? <laughs> we could have like thought bubbles, like in cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Cool. A little, little red little symbol on the side of the head that just shows up to the people you're being a liar. liar. He's like, mm, yeah, yeah, I don't believe that. Yeah, yeah. Go on, up, John. <laughs> so, so I don't know what Elon Musk had in mind when he came up with the blue tick, <clears throat> but I think he was trying to make people's identity fit reality, and th therefore he was charging for ownership of the blue tick verification, as he calls it, because. Once you put your card in, there's a good chance that they're going to have a lot of information about you. Mm -hmm. and, and like, for example, your address, sure. because a lot of a lot of real genuine bank cards are linked to a bank account, not the store right. cards, but the, the proper cards are linked to a bank account, you know, Visa and MasterCard. Right. They know right. where you live. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so what I want to know is. Where does God live? He's obviously coming up with this eight dollars a month <laughs> you know i mean even betty crocker has an email and an address and betty crocker never existed betty crocker is a corporate fiction mm. yes. so mm. i think where does god live is a valid question it's a good question yeah. it's a good yeah. question what if the and address was literally everywhere <laughs> it's like and i'm just, omnipresent yeah. You get, how, how many times do I have to explain that? It's totally fine. My address is everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, whatever. comma, universe. Everywhere. Yeah. All universes. I'm here. I'm here. My address is H-E-R-E. -E. Yeah. That's where the so, text is. So uh, if I want to write a letter to God, I don't actually have to put an address on it. I just yeah. have to write God. Exactly. Yeah. And if you don't have free will, he'd already know what you'd put on there. You'd get a, like an extra yeah. uh, envelope in your address before you and picked it up. Yeah. But just tweet, just tweet. It's all, it's right there. Larry, what's up? And, and does well, he I do mean, you could things? always, since God is everywhere, you can send him to the North Pole like Santa Claus. Exactly. <laughs> no, I was thinking uh, you, you, we've all seen these videos where uh, Trump is giving a speech and every time he tells a lie, you know, it's a ding. You know, in the background, we could just use the ding. It's short yeah, as we, you know, exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that'd be yeah, such I, a great little upgrade for us. Just be like, oh, I, you're I right. Would, we should have a criteria. Good job. I would Joe. prefer a klaxon. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> that would get old. I think. And just so, go, and, and, a, and a tune would get stuck in your mind. Yeah, John. Well, while we're talking about Betty Crocker, I want to know: Does God do cake mix? And if not, why not? Cake mix. Does God yeah, isn't, do that, isn't that Betty Crocker? Doesn't she have a company yes. that make, makes cake mixes? Yes, yes, absolutely. So, and it was good enough for her. Why can't God do it? And, you know, John, I am trying to understand. Would God, would God cakes be better than Betty Crocker's? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine his devil's food. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay. A angel food. <laughs> Angel, <laughs> angel food cake would be yeah. better good. Yeah. I think the devil's food cake would be pretty good too. Like it'd at least be more accurate. But John, yeah. would you be happy with that as a criteria upload by Supernatural God? It's just like I'm just going to modify it so we under intuitively understand when we're being lied to. Sorry about the confusion for not having it before. Everyone who suffered from that is in heaven, or if they died, they're in heaven now. Anyone who's still suffering, I turned off that suffering. I, I fixed it. I apologize. I hope everything's good. Would you be happy with that? I'd love that. Yes, as long as it doesn't involve surgery to insert a chip into my no, brain. <laughs> not my fingers. You're done. I'm not even asking you to worship me afterwards. But listen, 
I do have that eight bucks a month thing. So like if you as a as a <laughs> as the seven billion people around the world, if you could help me out with that, I'd be totally happy because I can't. It's weird how money works and I don't want to overpay anything. But like if you can donate it's, that, it's weird. I'm totally fine. I got it. How, uh, how prayer works. There are plenty of Just... places for eight dollars is a month's salary. That's true. Yeah. In some places, yeah. But I mean, apparently the, the preacher wants you to pray if your finances doesn't work. But they they always go to you for money instead of praying for it themselves. Right. If, right. If, if prayer worked, they just pray for it. Yeah, I was a little surprised to find out that you have to pay for the blue check mark. That kind of ruins the appeal for it, right? Mm. Like, and that's yeah, such a yeah. low. It's a low amount for certain yeah. people, so low, and then yeah. for other people, it's make or break the whole world. You know, exactly. Right. Yeah. There's right. been a lot, of, been a lot of comment along those lines mm. because it's a two tier system. Right. Now, the rich, can, the rich can have verification, mm. the poor yeah. can't. It's right. Like the legal so, system. It's a yeah, bad yeah. stratification of things. <clears throat> Typically, whenever there's Does a take cryptocurrency, I don't know. <laughs> what about Bitcoin? Does God take that? Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. So, or PayPal or Venmo. How, how about this? I want to do a quick round table. Just get an impression of what kind of questions you would ask the true God through his verified Twitter account. What would you ask? And it's not a it's not a quick easy answer for a lot of the questions that we do have uh, questions for. For example, the question I probably ask is like, why is there so much apparent complexity in the universe? You know, we spent 18 years in school just trying to understand some of the basic fundamentals of how reality works. Can't couldn't we live in a system where we either could transfer that information more intuitively to human beings so we don't have to spend so much time our youth sitting mm -hmm. in a room? Or make the universe more simple so that hot things are just hot and we don't have to understand about oxidation. I don't have to walk around with two nipples for an extra nipple I don't need. We don't have to worry about convection or UV rays. Like it's just the world, the earth was built for supporting human life and that's it. Like just built into intrinsically into the code and we don't have to think about sunscreen and all this water and thirst and hunger and, and wealth disparity and all this other stuff. Why is it so complex, God? I would love to get an answer like that. Um, or an answer to that. Um, I would I ask, why 137? 137 is a ubiquitous number in physics. It shows up in some of the most amazing places. Uh, it's the bonding constant. You're it's, talking about the golden ratio? No, no, I'm talking about, uh, I, I, I do... Uh, investigations into number lore and when i have pages upon pages of the number 137 showing up in physics and nobody knows why it's a total mystery scientists don't like to talk about it but it's there okay 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 cool. So cool. i think that would be a good acid test question why you, that number why that Proportion. Would, you, would you be satisfied if God just said that's my favorite number? <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Well, like, uh, it's yeah, just my favorite number. Green. It's a pretty cool number. Yeah. I see it as like white, green, and red. I haven't synesthesia. I have a weird <laughs> thing with numbers. <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. What's your question? Don't say so. I ask him. I mean, remember, he knows everything, right? Right, right, right. Are we alone? Oh, very good. Question. Where's our nearest neighbor? You know, inter interspace wise or. Mm -hmm. Or where was well. all this built just for humanity? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can yeah. look at the sky and go, oh. <clears throat> Not to bias the question, but I would love to know, would you want to know if we weren't alone? If we weren't alone? Yeah, the, either answer you? to that is is frightening. <laughs> 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 uh, it's so like, either way. I was like, actually, you're the only one. Isn't that great? It's like, we're the only thing? Yeah, you're it. I was like, yeah. Ugh, that sucks. Oh, yeah. Well, that means we don't have to worry about life on other planets. We can go ahead and, and send uh, plants there, or yeah. we don't have to worry about contamination. We yep. can just go there. Yep. Get the monkeys ready. We're launching them because we have to do something. <laughs> yeah. It's time to manifest the destiny. How about that? Let's just get out there now. Get uh, the monkeys ready. I got to remember that. <laughs> John Richards, what we. Yeah, I've got a much more relevant, personal, imperative question here. Okay, okay, is, okay. What's next week's lottery winning number? Ah, now here's uh -huh. the thing. If you have a tie in the lottery, it's split. Did you know that? At least in the U.S. Yes. So if he yes. gave the lottery numbers just no sweat, 
and seven billion people, people win the lottery next time, everyone's getting like a quarter of a cent, maybe uh, four hundred bucks. Cent. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not good for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about <clears throat> how how about then? Um, where's he been all this time? That's sure. a good question. I, that's a really good question. I yeah. like that. Yeah, of course, his answer would be here, but you're, you, you'd be uh, only these people knew about me, and that's yeah, the yeah. problem. That's like, why didn't I explain myself to everybody? Or like, yeah, why, yeah. why did these guys have the one true vision? Right? That's, why, that's what I, yeah, why did he pick three guys hmm. in a relatively tiny area of the right. world, right? To reveal that's himself the to, and why yeah. to everyone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, and well, they, like. Christopher Hitchens would always say, you know, let's say that humans have been around for 200,000 years. I mean, anatomically current humans. Mm. And he didn't send Jesus until 2,000 years ago? Correct. You know, why? Right. Yeah. Why what happened yeah. to all of those people who were not privileged to hear the gospel? Correct. Mm. And Are they automatically damned because yeah. of simply where and when they live? And, it, I'm not, and I'm not saying it's an acceptable answer. I'm definitely not saying that. But if it was, if the Twitter response to that was essentially along the lines of, well, I already will determine what happens to you after you die. So if you didn't know about me, I wasn't holding it against you. I'm just judging character. And regardless of the situation that you're born in, I, I, the faith and which God you're actually worshiping isn't important to me. It's more of a question of just how do you treat other people? That's really the main thing that I'm looking at. Um, and Anyone who dies, like I said, I can show you a picture of them. They're just right behind me. We're all hanging out. They're at the right seat of my table. We are having a good time up here regardless. So it's not that important if you didn't know about me. I just really am making sure that you were. Revelation 20 tells us that on judgment day, God is going to judge each person by their works. And that's the only criterion a just and fair God could use. Hmm. So. Yes, obviously, there had to be virtuous Sumerians. There had to be virtuous Australian Aborigines. These people are going to be judged by the kind of lives they lived and the way they treated other people. Um, to put any other caveats on it is to say that God is, in fact, not fair and just, hmm. which lies in the face of what most of us, most believers, believe about God. Yeah, yeah. Well, we know we know he's biased because he has chosen people. Yeah, <laughs> by virtue of that, yeah. I, 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 not only chosen people, but people who he's willing to enslave who are not the chosen people. Though we are getting close to the end of the show, guys. I like yeah, I like we the, need a... I like the here explanation of his location because I use that when I'm driving and yes. I keep turning around and I'm obviously lost and the kids say you're lost, aren't you? Mm. I say no. I know precisely where we are. We're here and okay. now we're here and now we're here and they've, for... they've taken they've taken that up now so so they always say i know where we are we're here <laughs> great conversation everybody well, Lord, I got we'll just throw it straight up to larry so we can close out the show for us and we can continue to talk after the show larry why don't you take us out um well this has been the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in knoxville tennessee um my con well digital free thought radio can be found on any podcast pretty much anywhere just go searching for a digital free thought radio hour my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.